Hello again, Art Peeps. We are here for um, a Let's Draw session. So, we're going to work on something uh, that I have in progress. Um, going to sketch it, <clears throat> going to ink it, I'm going to color it. So what this is, it's a, a little comic strip. It's a part of the Sancho's collection. If you don't know what Sancho's is, check the link below. Um, there's a link to uh, Volume 1, which is available for free download. Um, it's kind of a wacky take on social commentary. It's fun. It allows me to do some strange things. But right now, what I'm doing is uh, facts, sort of facts of nature, facts of different things that Sancho's can explore. Sancho's is, is the host, so to speak, of these uh, weird proceedings <laughs> that he's always the ringmaster of. Regardless, um, so this is what, uh, it's a let's draw session. So I'm just going to draw, I'm going to resolve a piece from beginning to end and show you the process, discuss a little bit about the materials and um, give you an idea of what's happening as I'm doing it. So, getting right into it. I have my sheet of paper here, this is Mayfair paper. It's, it's fairly sturdy, it's going to hold up uh, to the abuse I'm going to give it, uh, not too much abuse of course. Uh, I'm going to use watercolor in the end, sketch it out first in pencil, ink it, then the watercolor. And that's it. That'll be a page done for Sancho's Volume 2. Now, I'll take this opportunity to discuss uh, pencils, just a touch, because there's no better medium to draw with than pencils. You can have charcoal or Conte or chalks of any kind, ink of course. Um, pencil is the most forgiving. It, you can use that to your benefit, to sort of work out a piece, um, mold it with the pencil, and take it that way. It erases. That's the, the main thing about it. Now, pencils themselves, you'll notice that, uh, this is a standard tip set you can get, you'll notice that they have all the different designations. There will be the B's, <clears throat> the HB, there's an F that they throw in there, an H. Now, essentially what that means, and you don't really need to be too concerned about this, but the B is for blackness, so it's the darkness of the pencil. The H is for the hardness. So an example here is this is a 7B, which is part of the set. It's a little nub of the pencil that's left. But this is quite dark, a 7B. So it's dark and it's not hard. So it can really, it really, you know, spreads across the page nice. Um, and you'll go all the way, you know, to the I don't have any H's in here, they're all B's, but the H is the hardness, so you can get quite hard pencils. What I generally will use is an HB, just a standard HB, hardness, blackness, it's right, uh, perfect, it's not too dark, not too light, not too brittle, holds up well. In this case, I'm going to use an F, which is kind of in between an H and a B somewhere, it's a, I believe it's a European designation, the F, but... Regardless, uh, an HB pencil standard is perfect. These are good for different shades. If you want to go through all the grays, I think it shows, yeah, it shows right here. So it shows all the different gradients you can go through, and that's what these pencils are for if you really want to do that. Um, in this case, there's going to be no pencil left because I'm going to ink it. So I'm going to use the F, easy to erase, gives a light line, and uh, I mean, normally, like I said, I would use an HB, but uh, I'll just use this F because it's right there. Now, the idea I have for this page is I'm going to break it in half. I'm going to have sort of a semi-paneling happening here. It's going to be Sancho's the host, uh, so I'll put him here. And like I said, if uh, Sancho's is very easy to draw a character for me, and there's a lot of examples of him out there, but um, that's it. I've already built him, and he's going to be overseeing the proceedings. So you can see this line is not so dark, and that's because of the sort of in between H and B. Um, that 7B, if I would use that, this would be quite dark and, uh, and spreading across the paper. Um, it's graphite and clay that makes this up. So that H dictates how hard it is to get on the paper and how brittle it is. Um, the darkness uh, equates to the B, which gives it more, uh, and it's not quite as hard, and it powders more. So, uh, I don't even think they make pencils out of lead anymore. All this health concerns there. So, with this character drawn that's setting the stage for the rest of this, 
Now, this first section, like I said, I'm working on facts. So kind of strange, obscure facts of nature, things like that. And in this one, it's a wombat, apparently have feces that are cubes. I know it's strange, but that's what Sancho's all about, the strange. But wombats, I've never seen one. It's a marsupial, and uh, they have square crap. So I think that is just a freakish type thing, and I'm going to throw that up in this panel. And this one down here, um, I'll stick with the animal theme. I'm going to do cows apparently have differences in their actual moo <laughs> based on where they are regionally. So it's like an accent. Cows actually have an accent um, with how they vocalize. Very strange little facts, but like I said, he's all about that. So, <clears throat> wombat first. Uh, I am using a reference. I have, I'll show you. I have my little tablet here. Um, I've never seen a wombat before. I, I mean, they're pretty cute, I guess, some of these pictures, but uh, it's, it's definitely some furry. They're big, they're quite big. I guess they get to be able to meet her, but it's very strange. So I am going to use that reference and just kind of draw quickly this little creature. Quite a big nose. And I'm stylizing it, of course. I mean, I'm not out to create a, a perfect representation of a wombat. I mean, just the essence of the wombat. And that, like we've discussed before, is the beauty of drawing, is the beauty of art, is that you can take it in your direction how you see the world. So, they have little claws. And this one, I want him to be given a thumbs up because he's proud of himself for his accomplishment. They have a tail. Don't think so. Very strange little creatures. They're like uh, just like any more super little bit kind of rodent like, but it's like a bear or two in some ways. Okay, so he's got the thumbs up. I'm gonna put some shadow under him. It's pretty much a not bad, I guess. But if you didn't know, it's safe. And then behind him, of course, is a few squares. Which he's leaving behind to mark his trail, or his territory, I guess, is what that would be. So, and this is true, this is a true fact, they do actually have square feces. It's so strange, but I'm sure there's all kinds of variants when it comes to feces. Now the cow. Um, I have another reference set up. Just a quick cow. It's going to be a French cow, I think. Goofy, but uh, it's not the central zoom way, I guess. Others. stocky to enamel like enamel to uh, pressure like right? okay so preliminary sketch done 
Um, I'm obviously going to work on it a bit here. Clean it up. I'm going to give him a little beret. This is a French cow, of course. He's going to be saying something. Sandra's going to be saying something. Right here for the little pet. So that's it, the preliminary sketch is done. Now, like I said, just add a few things here and there. Obviously, the divider or some kind. I'll we'll do that out. So that's the preliminary. So that's a preliminary sketch. I'm going to work on this a touch, um, bring it out a bit, uh, fix some of this up. I'm having a problem with this neck here. I might have to redo that. But uh, I'm going to work on this a bit, and uh, I'll just flip to the next stage. Okay, so here we are. I uh, didn't want to bore you with the details of sort of whittling away at this. I spent a few minutes on it and uh, did some more shading, changed the word bubble, more shading, cut some things out. I changed, actually gave the cow somewhat of a neck, which he didn't have before, or she didn't have before. So that's good. It's all pencil drawn and um, now inking. Um, so I'm using just ballpoint pens here. Uh, they're ballpoint ink pens, permanent ink. Using permanent because I know I'm putting watercolor over top of this. So I have to have something that's not going to bleed. I mean, technically I could just go watercolor over top of this, but I want the black line anyway. So now it's ink time. And I'll have a few different pens here that I'll zip through. Um, but what I'll do is I'll just speed this up. I'll, I'll leave the camera on, but I'll just speed it up so that you can get a sense of this as it goes. So away we go. Okay, so inked. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, that only took a few minutes. I mean, uh, not very long. Once you have a, a decent enough pencil sketch, you can go. I mean, I did change some things as I was inking, um, but nothing. I, I followed my guideline that was here. So now I'm just going to erase all of the pencil that's on there. And I mean, you can see that shading just washed away, but that's fine because I'm going to use. Uh, watercolor for that, for those tones. Okay, so with these ballpoint pens, it dries really fast. I mean, it's not like a quill, an ink, or anything like that, which can take quite some time. Um, but these ones are fine, little ballpoint pens. So, I mean, I can start applying watercolor immediately to this, and I think I will. Okay, so there we have the sketch inked. And now we'll do some watercolor. Um, I do the text in Photoshop, it's easier, it's cleaner. Um, sometimes you can really mess up when you're doing text as far as having to line it up. It's very time consuming. I mean, Photoshop is one of those things that was made to alleviate that. Okay, so watercolor. So just bear with me. Now, 
in no way am I endorsing that you have a palette like this, <laughs> because this is a mess, okay? It's just random, random watercolor uh, things I've, I've built up on this paper. Soaking it up. And this is to get it ready for the pigments in the watercolor so that they're not just thick, but they blend, they bleed a bit. So the watercolors I'm using, I mean, these, it's a mess again, like my palette, but these are very cheap. I mean, I got these on eBay for a pack of all of 12 colors, I think, for three bucks. It was from China. The shipping was more than the actual supplies. Uh, regardless, um, I just whittle away at these. I mean, it's like anything. You don't need to spend a lot of money mm -hmm. on, su on supplies. There's adequate art supplies that you can get for cheap, cheap uh, bargain store, things like that. So there are options. Don't feel intimidated that you have to get all the best supplies. It's like the pencils, I said. But an HB is fine. That's all you're ever going to need is an HB. And you can, you know work your way around that. Make the materials work for you, don't work for the materials. Okay, so this is still wet. The paper's going to hold. It's not specifically watercolor paper, but uh, I'm not going to abuse it too much with it. So I'm just getting a very light kind of look of ground behind this one pad, which is some green, and leaving those cubes, obviously, because they have to be a very specific color. <laughs> but all the ground here, I'm thinking of it as grass behind him. So because I wet that paper, you see how it's bleeding? It's bleeding in to wherever that water is, it's spreading out the pigment of the watercolor. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of watercolor. It's, um, it's a soft medium. Okay. So I'm working from the backgrounds forward. I may jump around a bit, but uh, generally that's what I'm going to do. I know it's kind of cheeky, I'm doing this French cow here, La Moue, and it's kind of cheeky, there's like this weird kind of Eiffel Tower thing, which looks nothing like the Eiffel Tower, but just a cheeky little joke, and that's what Sanchez is all about, just cheekiness, so, same thing, I just, for the sky here, I just put down a base of water, and now I'm just putting pigment into it. Now you see how it bled a little bit into that uh, word box that I built? That don't matter. You can just uh, squeeze it out until it dries. You can actually manipulate the water cover quite a bit, as long as it's wet. I'll see the nice thing about watercolor is how it just goes with where the water is. It creates a very nice texture. Things like sky, grass, anything. the best artists have been focused on watercolor. Okay. Now I want this obviously to be green too, but I'm going to use a different green. And once again, I'm putting more water in so that once I put the pigment in, It'll just bleed through. Um, maybe I should show you what happens if you don't. So you see there's no bleed there. When I put that, I put no water there. So it creates a different sensibility to it. It doesn't blend the same way. And that could work. For something like that, that works. But uh, you have to be conscious of the materials as you're using them. So apparently, grass is a different shade of green. 
we just count things out, which is A-OK. -okay. And your colors will bleed continually until it dries. So I mean, even if I get up into here, it'll start to bleed a bit into that sky. So I can do two things. I can either wait until it dries, then work into it, or just be very careful as I'm working into it. And uh, in this case, I'm just going to be careful as I'm working into it. Because I'm not, uh, I mean, this is a, a little fun comic strip. I'm not overly concerned about uh, some bleeding or things like that. It's a real kind of punk rock type thing, Sancho's, so you can get away with a lot more, I guess. It suits it. Okay, now, you remember I told you about some of the shading? So I'm going to do that after a watercolor. So what I'm going to do is just add a bit here and some water where his shadow was. I'm just going to add some darkness to that. I'm just dabbing it into the water that's already there. Let it bleed out. Maybe just a touch darker than the rest of the ground around him. The same with this guy. I do the same thing. So I'm just adding some water so that it bleeds nice. Just put a little bit more pigment in there. See how some of it is going into the cut off, but that doesn't matter. Like I said, it's not uh, only the concern. Okay. I'm going to make this little wamp out kind of a yellowy color. So I didn't add any water, I'm just using the, uh, breaking down the uh, watercolor pigment with water just painting it right on him. And that's because I don't really want it to bleed too much on the outside, and if I soaked it in water, it would just bleed right out into that. So, I'm just going to add it to the dry surface. And the same thing, you see where his little curls are in shape, and where the creases are. And make that a touch darker. And with the watercolor, you can, I mean, the brush is basically dry now, and I can actually remove some of that water and color and give highlights. You can play with watercolor, it's nice like that. It's not as unforgiving as, as uh, some of the paints, you know, oil, in particular, which is, can be hell on earth. Okay, so the main bases are down. I'm going to make this cow into some kind of Holstein mutant thing. I'm just doing this light because I plan with this cow, I'm probably going to put a couple layers on him or her. On her. And, uh, Punch it out. This was a start to that. No, only the centrals. There's a crimson right there. Now, I'm just using the same brush. I mean, the watercolor is not sticking to the brush in the way other paints would, like acrylic. So, I can, I'm just using the same brush. It's not tainting the paints, the different colors that I'm picking up. It's a very quick and easy material to use. It's like pencil. It's the equivalent of pencil for paints. And pencil crayon is used for getting. See, so I can swim some of this watercolor around, spread it out. 
It's not a heavy handed material to use. You have to apply a certain gentleness to it. Okay, so there's the main the main point spread out. we can make a brown by mixing all the colors. We'll talk about color theory in another, another episode. But, uh, I mean, you can make your colors if you have the primaries, of course. And I do have a touch of brown here, so I'm going to use that for the little leftovers from the one that It's really strange that they have these kind of cube. I think it's so that they kind of stay where they are. It's got to be a territorial thing, I would think. So the more stable they'll roll around. I don't know if that makes sense, but it seems to. Okay. I'm going to put uh, a little cherry on his nose. A cute guy. The water watercolors will dry if you don't put the caps on. I was gonna find you out with a few of these. They'll dry out on you, but you can break them down, you just add water to them, and they're still usable. Nice flexibility to them. Okay, I don't know. I'll get a purple. I'm just mixing my um, some reds I have here with a blue to get a purple kind of thing. Because I want that array to be purple. So, so they will and a crimson mix here to create this deep purple. I'm going to go in with more ink after this dries. Um, this is kind of the, there's a few layers involved. There was the pencil, there was the ink, there's the watercolor now. And then I'm going to put ink again to punch everything out. Because the color does kind of diffuse some of the line. And I'm very interested in line as you can tell. So that is part of the process that I'm going to use here. up quite a bit though this dividing line for the panels. Pull more line in there, make it very viney. Well that looks alright. I'll uh the butter. So you can see, I don't know, you should be able to see that where it's pooling a bit, some of the color. You can use that to your advantage if you want it to pool in certain areas to your light of darks. Okay, so you can do certain touch-ups in Photoshop as well with color. But um, I mean the less the better, I would say and get the bulk of it done without Photoshop to save you time. And potentially a struggle with Photoshop, which can throw curves at you sometimes. Okay, so that looks all right.
to. So I'm going to let this dry, um, and then I'm going to go into it with some ink. But it's essentially going to be what you see here. I'm just going to punch everything out by going over some of the line with ink. Some of this that bled into these word bubbles, I'll just Photoshop that in. It's easy. I mean, I'm doing the text in the bubbles anyway. So there is a page. Um, I'll cut to uh, the After Effects after I, this dries and I think it. We'll discuss it a bit more. Okay, here it is. I put some more ink on there. As you can see, punched it out. Uh, that was my intention the whole time uh, because the watercolor will wash it on a touch. Now the nice thing about watercolor, I'm just going to show you this. You can actually still work it by just adding water. So if you have little areas you want to touch up or carry some of the color through too, you can. But this one looks good. I'm, I'm happy with where this one is. So actually this ink under this warm pad is still a touch wet. So I'm just doing a little bit of shading with that. So that's it. So now anything else? Oh, I wanted to show you right here. Um, I messed up a bit. It was a little too round, and I didn't like that. So I just kind of drew it out as I went. And for this, it's going to be a quick fix. I have some white acrylic paint, dollar store, cheap. I'm just going to put that there. I'm just going to fix this up a bit. Just like that. And here. And since I have the white, spots on Sancho's. So this is the Sancho's thing. It's little wacky facts, little factoids, strange things. And like I said, he hosts a you, uh, the reader, through it. And uh, it's all for fun. This is just a little quick drawing I did just to add uh, to the new one I'm doing, the new volume I'm doing for him, which is all facts. So just random things like this, which um, will be on full display in volume two of the wonderful world of Sancho's. So there is a watercolor ink drawing. Um, cheap paper, Mayfair, but it holds it because I didn't have to do too much. So now I'll give it a scan, put it into Photoshop, do the text, and uh, you know clean up some little things here and there. And it's ready to go. Um, so I'll also show, I'll show the scan uh, as I'm wrapping up uh, with, the, with the end credits or whatever. And uh, you'll see the finished piece, but as well, there is links below. Please check it out. It's uh, the Sanchozian section of Nim Productions' website. And uh, there's a lot of wacky stuff there. It's really fun, actually, Sanchos. So uh, there it is. Uh, like I said, I'll show you all the, the wrap-up of this. And thank you for viewing this once again. And please subscribe if you can. Um, like I said, it's incentive for me to do these videos. So thank you again.